So how's, how, li- how's life? Yeah, uh, life's life's not too bad. It's been a little while since we've had a chance to sit down, and I I see that yeah. uh, time flies. Yeah, yeah, uh, phalanx have been busy busy over the Christmas and New Year period. I noticed that uh, you're not really resting on your laurels too much. No, not really. Um, it's been it's been a very busy year in general, and it seems it's going to be another year that's quite busy, which is good because you know we do what we love. So yeah. I think you know when you when you're down to working and stuff, you really like. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like work really. But that's what they, that's what they tell me. Yeah, but it's but but it still you know requires a lot of attention and, and education and and uh, so let me express my thanks to all the people that work with us for mm-hmm. the last year with stuff you did, guys and gals. It's incredible and uh, and we're looking forward to work, work with you and deliver even more incredible stuff next year and in the years to come happy days yeah so shall we shall we dive right in this is going to be a sort of a a news update from phalanx because there when i said you've been busy at the start of this year i, I wasn't joking there's a lot going on um which yeah because we, we we still have we have still four kickstarters to deliver mm. and i think you know we everyone it's it's really easier to just talk about it and people sure. sometimes like to read some other people rather rather listen or watch so um, I, I thought you know instead of covering any specific subject we could jump a bit here sure for uh to well, uh jump where do you want this. to start i suppose is the the big question then um you've you've got a, a few different topics that you want to cover and there's a few bits and pieces i've been doing as well with you recently yeah uh, so we can cover so. it all yeah. At least try to. Uh, should we start start the bidding with total domination then? I yeah, we can do that. So uh, it, what, what we used to call domination has received a new brand name, which is total domination, because mm-hmm. we think we don't have any reason for it. Uh, one of it is basically the differentiation. Mm-hmm. So we've seen that there are games which are called domination, dominations, you know, it's, it's kind of becomes a bit generic and yeah. while we would love to have that just for ourselves it would be rather difficult um so um we decided to add the the word total mm-hmm. to the word domination which i think describes very well the, the the concept of the game itself yeah and it derives from the idea of a total war the name that was given to the german war effort mm-hmm. by the readers uh, and the goal of the game is to you know to be, achieve a total domination over the world of the as it was at the beginning of the Second World War. Yeah. So this was this was a fascinating one. Um, I got a chance to see uh, Justin played about with a, a tabletop simulator version, yep. and it was really nice drafting mechanic um, for playing these games of. Uh, really world war ii logistics it, it, it's not so much a a game of armies it's a game of making sure your your forces are in the right logistical place to actually achieve your goals so it's, yeah 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 it's i think you game. got it right um it's first of all it's 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 a non-european design hmm. wei chang is the uh designer of this game and it's been published before as a mini world war ii mini hmm. mini ww and then let two letters yeah. i which which creates nice uh graphical sign it looks like a like a logo itself but uh mm-hmm. in our understanding first of all it, it's not mini anymore uh it's rather grand yeah uh with with all the with all the minis that we've pumped into it for a reason mm-hmm. they are not just well they are toys but we wanted to educate as we entertain Mm -hmm. that's i think one of our claims so the minis represent all the major military instruments let's say instruments of war yeah which are planes ships and tanks uh those three major um instruments which help to deliver power across the continents and oceans Mm -hmm. um so each of them is is different. So you have all array of you know um, beautifully sculpted minis representing all types of armor and ships and, and planes. So you can learn 
and, and learn more as you play. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're looking at is the cardboard version, which is the, the basic version. Yeah. And the extra set of minis is available through the late pledge, which is still open. And I think that's worth mentioning that it's probably last chance to get uh, some expansions through the late pledge at, mm -hmm. at the moment, because the moment we close it, it won't be as easy as it is now. So if you're interested in the project itself, that is the moment to do it. Um, regarding the game itself, as you said, it's it's less of a war game in the strategic or operational sense. Yeah. You're not trying to find that uh, solution to the immediate battle in the region. You're trying to understand your overall situation and 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 design axis of advance or, or for your armed forces. Mm -hmm. And to keep them supplied in a very clever, intelligent way, because that's this, of course, I and then well, of course, but it's an area control game with a with card card driven with a draft. So you're trying to optimize basically mechanically wise. You're trying to optimize your hand in in order to be able to introduce the strategies you want to su mm -hmm. support the strategies you want to introduce into the game board, and at the same time trading off your activation points, if you want, or yep. your, your sources, as I like to think about it. Um, oh, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good map. I'll just mention this in a second. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to trade them with exhorting influence over potential ally, allies and um, also to build your tech tree. Because, you know, as Napoleon said, you know, like one, one good soldier fights as a, uh, as three bad soldiers yeah. and it's the same so here it here is the same a, a better tank takes the same amount of fuel and but, but fights like three yeah. worse tanks and so what you're trying to do is trying to in, in a game while you're exhorting the the power across mm -hmm. the continents and oceans at the same time you're trying to make your forces as effective as they could be in order to you know to deliver a better kill ratio if you want right and it's also it's it's a an asymmetric game as well so when people are playing not everybody is equal um, no it, and, it, and it rarely is in fact yeah. I, I think we're not equal ourselves no. and uh and it would be it is very even in chess which is supposed to be the most equal games of all it's not because as we know one side moves first and yes. that play makes the strategies different so uh um, of course, there would be games which put you in exactly the same shoes, like everyone mm -hmm. has exactly the same starting point, and then things happen. But do they always happen in an equal way? That's this, that's something that we can discuss quite a long time, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we are not trying to tell everyone was, you know, that's in geopolitics, mm -hmm. uh, your, your position, the place on earth is, is important. The place you control, the how you exert power, where you can go, where you cannot go, where can you be supplied, cannot be supplied, what lies between you and your closest ally, and things sure. like this. The position is everything. Um, look at Britain and the splendid isolation has not been conquered since yeah. what 1066. That's quite a light, quite a quite a time. Uh, and that is for a reason, it's it's of, of the position, and so and so on. So um not a, Japan in a in a quite similar situation also on 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 a chain of islands, uh, and, that's and, uh, and and fa but but facing different challenges because of lack of resources and so on and so on. Yeah. So not everyone has been equal. Probably in, in strategy, this it's not going to happen. Um, that's why using. Different type using politics, diplomacy, mm -hmm. um, technology, you know, and military means, the powers are trying to change their position to a better one, and to get the leverage on the weaker powers. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. that's just so it's been from the beginning of the humanity, and it's gonna last for a while. It, apparently, the history is not bad yet. No. 
<laughs> you know, it's it's always a struggle for resources, whether those resources are mineral or yeah, they, they, humanity, they change, right? You know, they, change. The, the change they, they also change. Uh, you know, yeah. like Sweden for a while has, has been a dominant power in Europe because of the yeah. iron ore they had, and and um, and now as as we see the world's changing as well because the different type of resources are becoming more in, more and more important, and different powers grow and different powers fall, and so on. So, so, and uh, you know, Francis Fukuyama apparently was not right when he when he declared the end of history. <laughs> it's not finished yet. No, no, it's not. Um, On the subject, though, of um, sort of the, the geo, not not even the geopolitical, but actually the the geographical areas that people have in total domination, that plays a factor because the direction and movement of your forces is dependent on on the board and we've seen we did see the this is the new board outline yeah 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 so so uh that's a funny thing is uh, important the designer originally wanted to create um or cre actually create it um mm -hmm. uh, a map board which is a, a square map but with which, which equal this, number of spaces across this style here yeah yeah that's yeah. that's the one and then uh, and it looks great and it plays very well, but mm -hmm. not everyone is willing or to um, to understand the layout. Yeah, or, yeah. It doesn't. If you if you play the, a game, let's say put it this way: if you play a game with without a need of analyzing where you are in the mm -hmm. world, then this map is perfect. You don't need anything else. Yeah, Euro player would play this game without questioning yeah you, you don't need to know where these various places are in relationship to each other yes on because the you just play a game right you're just, you just yeah you're just trying to solve the the strategic puzzle that mm -hmm. you were presented with and you look at the connections and it's quite neat because you see how many spaces you yeah know, the, the the distances are the same so this you just count the number of spaces and here you go right yeah uh, while in the other presentation, which is a result of a uh, feedback we've received for, mm -hmm. from from our uh, followers and people who were interested in the game itself, we've we've heard a lot of a bit of criticism regarding the, the first mm -hmm. the map we've we've seen before that it's too abstract mm -hmm. and people wanted to, to to know where exactly the forces are, how they you know. Are related to each yeah. other in terms of geographical position. So, with a little bit, little bit of a help of PGG, where mm -hmm. people started to post their maps, they felt like, mm, you know, well, why yeah, not? You could find right? something that so it doesn't actually change the direction of travel or how people can interconnect. These it, it no, it's still, exactly the it's, same. It's yeah. still exactly the same. It's just it's the how, same map. It's just it's, different representation. It's just different representation. It's fascinating so it's like how people. Game pick up on things and how how they interpret you know it's like i need to know where i am geographically well sometimes, you're, you're yeah, still sometimes, you're still only apparently yeah i think the more informed you well, are yeah. the more informed you are the more uh um they want the more you want to see the connection mm. to history the more you'll be drawn towards this map because mm -hmm. it tells you however as as you know then however as with these types of maps where you start start to be more specific because the, the original one mm -hmm. is kind of like uh it's not very specific so we can assume you know something we can it, yes. it's, it's it's simplification it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an abstraction uh, abstraction right yeah. it's in in a quote sign it's like um we, we're communicating we're not very serious about geography mm -hmm itself we are serious about the relation between geographical positions while on the other map we're telling you yeah you were in hawaii and you cannot go to america without going through canada which means nonsense yes uh however it in game situation it works very well yeah, because it, it tells you yeah. you know like you need to have uh, america as a canada as a you know america actually kicks in as a second so canada is already in war so it doesn't really matter yes yeah, because the the game has been yeah, designed yeah, because a they, they, for they effect. The map they, has been effect designed for effect. Right? Yeah, they trigger when they would have came in to the actual um, conflict. So, so having yes, you have the kind come of well you, first, you, you, you can then, influence yeah. the American entry to the conflict. Um, so you can bring them in a bit earlier, a bit later than the original that it mm -hmm. historically happened. So you have more control of it, right? So, so um, yeah. 
It's a fascinating yeah, I game. I, re I really like the, especially things like the tech trees as well, where you are, you're making those decisions based on how you're playing and how your opponent's playing. And it's like, well, yes, I could get more bang for my buck. Speaking, but you can't have everything. But, but you can't have also... everything. Yes, yeah, so you're having to choose. It's like, is naval power better for me in this particular situation than actually maybe you know trying to upgrade my my land based forces or should I which be plays researching... very nicely with which which plays very nicely as well with the minis mm. and and a historical situation as well. Look at Japan, right? They yeah. Japan hardly had any tank force. Actually, yeah. the tank yeah. force they had in 1938 was defeated by the, by, the, by the Soviets. And then since then, they only can like come up with a few designs of tanks, which were kind of uh, rather lousy, you know? They wouldn't yeah, stand. At uh, best, you could call them as maybe something akin to tankettes from, yeah, from like the early tank, war in you know, Europe. Yeah, that, that'd be the, probably the best but, thing. Yeah. But they but, didn't need them. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I think, and then geography plays out a massive point in that as well because they were dealing with island chains being able yeah, to and they, cover they needed navy right they, hundreds of miles in a tank was pointless because they just needed something to get people to the islands and then deal with it when they were there they also so, decided yeah. quite early whether well, that's the subject for another discussion like how they ended up in the war it was it their oh, yeah. original decision or was it helped by someone but that's something that our viewers will probably find out themselves. We didn't have to create no. any stories here. But of course, you know, they had two strategies to choose, let's say, to choose from. One was mm -hmm. going against continental uh, enemies or foes like China or potentially Soviet Russia. Mm -hmm. And the other was going to the ocean, uh, fighting uh, the, you know, the Western allies, US, uh, France, Dutch and, uh, and Americans mm -hmm. and England, uh, sorry, British. So, um, so that was the choice they were facing. And of course, they've chosen one solution and sacrificed the other. And sure. the game is trying to tell you a little, like, was it the right decision? Or maybe at least you have two strategies. You can go mm -hmm. against mainland or you can go ocean, take the ocean strategy and, and explore a little. See, because it does not give you an answer, but that yeah. gives you an insight, right? Yeah, exactly. And if people are interested, um, the beta version of the rules are available. There's a couple of gameplay and, and sort of rhyme breakdowns on the site as well. Yep. But how how long is the uh, the late pledge going to be open for? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what we will do is we'll, we'll find that out and drop it in below to let people know how long they've yeah, got. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because let's do that. I, I, I imagine that's, you're, uh, that's the piece of information people may be looking for, yeah. but, uh, but I'm not operationally responsible for it. So I don't. <laughs> that's, that's all right. Well, we will shake the trees and see who is operationally responsible and find out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but that is that is literally just, that's the first little nugget of information. So if people are interested in having a look at total domination, uh, they can now if you missed out on the Kickstarter, the late pledge is open, um, probably for a little while. Uh, yeah. Where do we want to move on to? Do, do we want to talk uh, about freedom? Because yes, yes, yes. I'd news. love to talk about freedom because the day, big date is coming. You know, it's uh, what like it's, uh, the twenty fifth of March. Yep. Is uh, if people are unaware, the um, Greek Independence Day, and uh, that's for a reason. And and the reason behind that. Uh, as far as us being interested, is freedom, which is all about the Greek War of Independence against the the uh, Ottoman Turks, um, is about to come. It's actually available for pre-order. Yes. So, uh, but the pre-order is exciting and different because you're going to be branching into more languages. So it's not just going to be. Uh, and not just English, English language, yeah. yeah. So the way, yeah, the game has been originally published, been, has been published only in English, mm -hmm. uh, and and we, and that was also for a few reasons. The main reason was like we thought, oh, it's, that's a very difficult game to market. Mm. It's a great game itself. It's not just a Zeech game, as you see. The top of the map is the operational region where the small, small bit in red. Just here. outline shows yeah. you where this the lower part of the map is. So that is the lagoon and city of Mesolonghi. Yeah. Uh, and the regions around it are the places where you're trying to, you know, win support from. So in order to actually 
move the siege forward, you would mm -hmm. need to control some of at least some of the regions around the city yeah. because the city was positioned in a lagoon and was able to to draw supplies from outside. So we'd have to isolate it first mm -hmm. before being able to take it. And it's another fascinating game that shows that nothing exists in a vacuum, I suppose is the best way to put it. The, the siege of Mezalonghi, um was a year long siege near the start. There was three of them. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, there, there were three. But this, this one focuses on the last of the sieges. And then the, the actual Greek War of Independence continued for another I think six, maybe seven years before it finally Depending came on how you count it, because so, 28, I think, was the end of the war, but it, the, the negotiations took another two years. So they have ended up 1830, I think. They signed, they signed a treaty on, in, 19, in 1830. That's hmm. when it ended. But, so it dragged for nine years. Yeah. yeah. And and within that, even though there's this siege game, um, that the, the top half of the map being the surrounding area, which then can be controlled by either the Greek insurgents or the uh, the Ottoman Turks. And based on what happens out there, that obviously then changes what's happening to the support within the city in itself the, and yeah, the, in the, city itself. the Turkish army. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful system. I have had the chance to sit down with the author, uh, Vangelis, uh -huh. um, which we're actually we're holding that interview back. So if people are interested in that, it's going out on the 25th of March um, because that is Greek Independence Day and it seems somewhat fitting um, that that people get a chance to... to Vangelis is a great person to talk about it. Um, oh, he great. did a marvellous job with this game and he gave he gave it all his heart. And yeah. uh, and I, I, when, I, when I've heard him talking about it, I thought, oh man, it has to be published because uh, you rarely see people so excited about, about something. Yeah. And uh, and I thought, you know, originally I thought we had those thoughts in the company, like, oh, if we retheme it, mm. it would be a really, really great, you know, great selling game. And we resisted the temptation um, uh, because, first of all, he he deserves oh, yeah. the game to be yeah. published the way he wants it. Secondly, I think it's a very underrepresented topic. Nobody really. Yeah, knows I, much about it. I, Even, you know, I, I know one thing about the Greek War of Independence, and that was that uh, Byron ah, got, that's got involved the one. there. Okay, so you see, and, because, and, be, yeah. And so if it see, wasn't for some that, people don't even know about Byron, about Byron, right? Yeah. Because Byron is long gone. And I, yeah. even, even funny, because I was born on the same day of the month as right. Lord Byron, which uh -huh. is 22nd in January. So I know about his existence, but... It, he's gone for me. I haven't read Byron. Have you? No. You know, no, because he's not a, a contemporary man, and his poetry yeah. is quite difficult to read because it's not contemporary. Yeah. At his times, however, he's been a personality. He was a that time television, right, or a yeah, radio. Yeah. Because people bought poetry because that was the way to entertain themselves. Now we don't because we have all this media, you know, games, easy accessible stuff. Mm. The imagination is you know, working all the time, wherever we go, there is something catching us and, and drugging somewhere. People, yeah, they, 200 years ago, people were deprived of it. They didn't have it. And I think it was the fact that um, that Byron was such a, I'm trying to remember the, the phrase they used to use for, or the name they used to use for, essentially a, a lover of all things Greek. Um, and that's sort yes, of- Yes, he was, he was uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's it's like a filia file or so. There, there yeah, is a, there yeah, is a name a for it, word, but I, yeah. I can't I can't remember off the top of my head. But the fact that he shone a light on what was happening there um, gave people a bit more interest in Europe. But it was still probably was, he actually helped to won to win the war itself. Because if we look at the historical from historical hmm. perspective, uh, you know, the fall of Constantinople was fourteen fifty three. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so it's four hundred years almost. Yeah. It's the, the Greeks were not just Greeks, but all the South um, European nations yeah, were yeah. under the occupation of, of uh, Ottoman Empire. And now I, I, I'm not into discussing was it good, was it bad, and how did yeah, they feel, yeah, and was, so on. Was, I think it, it was just what it was at the time. That, yeah, uh, it's, it's yeah. exactly you know that, that's yeah. how it, how things were. The, the, the empires existed, and they've exalted their power, they their rules, and. And, and the order. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, at least some nationalities living within the empire were not as happy with, with them, the way the empire ruled their land. And Greeks yeah. were one of them. And, uh, it, it, you know, they, from their perspective, they've been there since ever, right? Because n- there was nobody else that we know about, except maybe for Mio- Minoans or, yeah. you know, the ancient the Greeks, which were before the other Greeks, the Dorians, Ionians, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so and so on. But the, that's their place mm-hmm. since the beginning of history. And now it's been taken over by somebody else with a different faith. Yeah. Because that's a touchy subject nowadays. We're trying to avoid it, but that's that's probably not sure what should be we should we should be doing. You know that. Yeah. Of course, we we live in relative uh, peace between religions in twenty yeah. first century, but it, it's never been, it's it wasn't the case no. two hundred years ago. And so what Van Gallis was telling us yeah. was actually there was a religious war, right? It, it was more or less a continuation of the the reconquest following. The Crusades, as as the Turks just um, recaptured the Holy Land, and there was various falling outs because you, we still view things from a very, I suppose, narrow band. You know, when we look at the Crusades, it was Christianity attacking uh, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the Muslims, no. but then post that, it was not one coordinated Muslim or, or Islamic army. They were always little um, powers and sort of principalities. And, and, you know, and with, with all the all types of wars, there's always a question who was first, yeah. right? Like we can tell, okay, Greeks were there. Mm. At, and, uh, you know, when, when we hear about uh, Christianity, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, to- you know, so this, this yeah. is all, these are all very the, the touchy subject because we, in nowadays culture, and uh, environment we don't discuss. We take an assumption that w- what one side did was good and what the other was wrong, mm. but we don't look very deep into it. But just a just a food for thought. Yeah. So, so Christianity was in the Middle East before Islam. Yeah. And that's the fact. And Jewish people, and then. Christianity, which was a split off the Jewish religion, was there before, and then the the the, the, the Islamic nations, Arabs, basically came in and conquered it, right? Yeah. And what is written in the papal uh, call to arms uh, around the year to uh, one thousand forty three, I think, if I remember mm. correctly, yeah. is is a call to Christian knights. Go and defend your brothers in the Holy Land because they are being oppressed by the occupation of mm-hmm. the foreign religion. So that's how the Crusades start, and that's that's the myth, and yeah. that's the reason for all these knights for whom the religion was a, the, the most important thing. That's very difficult for us to understand now that the religion could be your most at your utmost value in life it was the because that's how your system of values is being created and there is a reason for it which i'm not going to touch no. because i think everyone had a religious dedication so they know why why religion was and sometimes even is important for many people around the world right and if it wasn't we wouldn't be so um a, in a in a limbo regarding should we discuss it or not? Well, I feel like we should discuss it. We should we should express opinions, not aimed at at uh, making someone feel bad, but trying to bring as objective narrative from both sides as we could have. Yeah. So the interesting thing about that is that you have these conflicts that are not not particularly well known here in the the sort of western europe but oh, yeah, yeah. when you look at this and, and the game does a beautiful job of this explaining that it's not just a uh a, a siege game that is in and of itself isolated from the rest of the rest of the conflict in the rest of europe because you have these decks of cards within the game that are sort of split into early and late siege with events that come out that may be things like um generals drafted in from other parts of the empire 
uh, on the Ottoman side to replace you, and this causes loss of morale as time continues to sort of tick on. And and throughout the game, you have these little tastes of the history that make you want to go back and sort of learn more about it. And you see that it's not just a black and white conflict. Um, it wasn't. Uh, if you, if you, if you look at it at the um, so the siege, mm-hmm. the siege ended with. Uh, all the population of the city be driven to the point that they they decided to go for a sortie, the last sortie, yeah. right? And uh, so in the morning they they leave, everyone leaves, storming the, the positions of the of the Ottoman forces. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was around twenty thousand people. One thousand of them break through, and the rest didn't. So what happened to the rest of them? They were either killed on the spot. Or they were cap- captured and sold to, to, to slavery, right? Yeah. But in the same war, the Greeks did more or less the same to the Ottomans when they've conquered Dave Town. You know, yeah. so it was very vicious. That was that conflict was to be or not to be, basically, right? For 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 the nation. That's why it it was so intense, and uh, that's why and and being on the outskirts of Europe because. Even nowadays, like, you know, in the West, there is not much of a either interest or understanding of what's going on in the East, apart exactly. from, yeah. from, you know, eating kebabs, which are, um, which exist on a, on a different name in most mm-hmm. of Central and Southern Europe, which is funny. And, yeah. and uh, there is an ongoing war between Turkey and, and, and the Greeks who are going to tell you who invented them, mm. for example, right? Um, there is not much of a of an understanding, and that's that's importance of Lord Byron because he was the figure, yeah, in the West. He was loved. He was he was popular, and then he tells you about this nation everyone forgot about. They thought Greeks are you know Homer and yeah other guys. They, they were just citizens of Ottoman Empire. They, nobody considered them really you know. Like, mm. An important part of of Europe. The, the yeah, they're, they're, gone, they're, right? they've they've gone from being essentially central to development of civilization within Europe to, to being, being pushed on the fringe. Yeah. yeah, and then he goes to Messalonghi uh, with the money, and he wants to fight on the side of the Greeks. Mm. In the war, and he starts, you know, working on uh, a mobilization of forces and so and so on, and he dies because of the disease, like some kind of a, some kind of a, um, uh, I wonder if it was, was a virus or poisoning. Poisoning, I think, yeah, mm. and he dies in the place and becomes, and there is a, there is a statue in, in, in town and so on. Um, but but his sacrifice makes it popular. Mm-hmm. So and the Greeks are too weak and too divided between themselves because they still don't know which way to go. Right? Shall we fight for a um, what kind of what kind of freedom do we want? That's the question that has been asked by every, all the freedom fighters, even in Scotland. Right? Remember uh, uh, remember the, the the iconic Wallace and and, yeah. and Bruce. That, and the the Bruce, way they yeah. didn't they didn't know which way to go. And, and they ended up on different different sides of, of the same war. And uh, so Greece is the same. It's, it faces the same problems all the freedom fighters are facing. They, they don't have one vision. That's, that's the story the books love to tell us, right? They had a dream about freedom, but mm. what the dream exactly was like? Yeah. Was it, I... was the, was it did they have any kind of an agreement? These things are seldom, seldom that simple as well. And, and what one person views as um, as freedom for themselves may still be seen as tyrannical from other members of the same sort of uh, faction. So, it, yeah, that's, that's it, it, it. it. The, the overall idea we may We shouldn't be, underestimate yeah. the the works of the Turks, right? Who, who were mm-hmm. interested in keeping the province under their occupation, under their control, mm-hmm. and who worked towards dragging some of the uh, Greek leaders onto their side and mm-hmm. uh, and keeping them in their fold. So the Greeks are divided. They are too weak. They don't have really 
much of a force except for a navy, uh, mm. which is because the Greeks are a maritime nation, so they they have private ships become um, uh, become. Naval, yeah, they're, they're form essentially their, their power. They, press they armed into service. Yeah, they they arm their their civilian ships and then they start to uh, block the Ottoman approaches, but they are still too weak because the Ottomans they have a regular navy hmm. with all the guns you can imagine, right? The ships of the lines, frigates, everything, and that calls at the end of it for intervention by mm-hmm. the Western powers, France, uh, I think, Austria, Russia, and and, uh, and Britain. Britain, yeah. At, uh, and, and the combat, at the uh, naval combat at Navarino, they've, they've tipped the scales and decided and told basically the Turks, you got to consider the Greeks important now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, and, and I think a lot of that um, intervention from the, the, the Western powers at the time mostly came down to how the siege at Mezlongi ended yeah. um, and, and because of that. So it's, it's, it's a fascinating microcosm. A founding of stone a of, uh, of Greek independence. That, yeah. That's why it is important. And as a, as a maybe closing line regarding mm-hmm. the subject, we published the game in English and it had tremendous uh, interest, created tremendous interest, support, the game is highly rated. People like to play yeah. it, love it. And we thought, uh, okay, we have to have it. It's 200th anniversary of Greek independence this year. And we thought, yeah. okay, we have to publish it in Greek. And then we thought, okay, so we're publishing this in Greek and in English. And then what? So that's going to be, it's, why not French? <laughs> okay, let's, let's do French as well and then Spanish. So let's throw in German and Polish as well. That's why if you go to our website, <laughs> uh, you can find... Uh, an option to support uh, in one of the selected languages. Yeah, the numbers are slowly, slowly growing, and uh, if you have the interest, jump in and choose your language version yeah. and, uh, and the, get some freedom. Yeah, the thing about it is, it's not a. This one isn't a time limited pre order. No, um, no, no. We we so it's, we it's once you reach the numbers when we to reach two hundred. Yeah. So, in each language version, right? Yeah. So. If you're on the fans, you actually so your support will help to get the game published. Really, really, because it's it's a really difficult project in terms of you know it's not a very popular subject. Yeah, but yeah, a great it's, game. It's, <laughs> it it does look like a fantastic game. I'm looking to to get my hands on a copy of it myself um, because after having having spent an hour with uh, Vangelis just discussing it, um, I. I not just blown away by his enthusiasm for it, but also by the design choices he made as well. So I definitely recommend anybody who wants to know more about freedom uh, on the 25th uh, Greek Independence Day, check out that interview whenever it goes out. So yeah, three, those, those three the, small mentions and yeah, we're done. Okay, so the, the two big ones out of the way, but these these ones are up and coming for people to keep an eye on. So I've got news for the supporters of the Martin Wallace's game, mm-hmm. Rocket Men. Uh, and it's not about uh, how, how Tesla is doing on the stock exchange, really. Right. <laughs> uh, but as you know, you know the, the game has been inspired by that competition between the, the riches of this world who mm-hmm. wanted to be first in the, in the outer space with their commercial enterprises and the game is based on the concept that in order to go there you need to first build an earthly empire that will support your wild dreams of cosmic Mm -hmm. exploration that's why rocket man is sense to be a good uh title uh and uh, and there are there is a few people who inspired us to to create the game and I'm not talking about their personalities that you may like or may not like, but mm-hmm. the, the way they behave and what is driving them as uh, human beings yeah. to do something. So happy to announce that the launch of the game in Europe is going to be on April the 12th. Mm-hmm. So we'll be sending the games right away, anytime now. The game's ready. We'll be reaching you if you support it. And if not, then uh, April the 12th, you should be able to get it. Yeah, so that's the, that's one, one of the three to go. Mm-hmm. 
Second is non-tinarking, which seems to be rather popular in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll soon see a new and lighter version. It's sold out in Europe. You can't get it. So we'll be catching um, a new version, which plays exactly the same. It's just the components that we're changing to make okay. it more accessible, let's say, it, because it's quite an expensive game. We, will, we believe that it should be more popular. So yeah. looking at ways to make it less expensive. While in the US, you're listening to this in the US, that the game's still on in stock and you should you should consider getting it before it runs out if you're into this the theme and the mechanics, mm. because it's still available with all these beautiful minis there. And if you like minis, then check this out. And the last one, but not least, um, it's coalitions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hope to have it up and running on the anniversary of the death of Napoleon Bonaparte, which is 21st of May. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a Napoleonic themed political, mostly political, I think, strategic game for uh, rather many players. Uh, but, uh, but please tune in and check it out for you. And uh, the best would be if you could just like the Kickstarter page so you can be informed about what it is, how it plays, and what it's going to be like. That, that one sounds fascinating as well because I've, I've started dipping back. Oh, we've into been testing mic. it for over a year, yeah. and, and it plays really, really well. And it presents the, 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 com the complications and situation of ge geopolitics in Napoleonic Europe rather mm. well. And we've seen very often that it's not France that wins, which is, yeah. which is good. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and, well, and that some, maybe not good in historical sense, but yeah. uh, and it's it's sometimes strange as to how things end up when um, Napoleon packs up uh, a general who's been particularly good and sends him off to become royalty in another country. You know, it's yeah. it's it's strange how many um, I suppose nations currently exist the way they do because of what Napoleon did before he lost, oh, and been, people forget about I've, that. I've I've lately seen I. Uh, and a map showing how much Romans actually had of an influence over the world mm -hmm. when it comes to legislation for in faraway countries uh, and many, many, many other cultural achievements or technological achievements. But I think a map showing the, how far Napoleonic legacy is still spread and it yeah. still exists and how many nations exist thanks to what or as a as a as splinter a of what yeah. he did that's uh, that's amazing the only the only tragic thing is we never got his decimalized time it, mm -hmm. it just never stuck around nobody wanted to go for a a, a 10 hour day but yeah shame uh, apart from that it, it seems like there's some fantastic stuff coming from you uh over the, the coming oh, there months. is three more campaigns that we'll need to deliver uh rather soon but that's going to be a subject for our next conversation, I think. That's good. Well, folks, if you have any questions, please drop them below. Um, I think my plate is going to be filled up over the next few weeks slash months with doing some interviews with some of the games designers that we've talked about today. Um, so if you have any questions about any of the games we've talked about, please drop them below. And when I'm chatting to their uh, relevant designers, I'll be sure to ask them. Uh, until the next time, Miao, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.